I still think about you Living in New York, you were 22 In a white t-shirt and designer shoes How could I forget how they looked on you On your way to work, it was almost noon How I had my eyes set on you Blowing kisses like only a queen could do I fall faster than I need to That just shows how much I need you But love is not new It's just a feeling that seems so close to you But the rain keeps falling down on your window The rain keeps falling down on your window And clouds keep blowing in Clouds keep blowing in and your head keeps falling down on my pillow Your head keeps falling down on my pillow And I just can't pretend I just can't pretend Cause oh, oh, I never know No, oh, I never know I never know just how to feel I never know just how to feel about you back to Brooklyn You'll go back to Brooklyn and leave me Limer. Yes, how you doing? Good, how are you? I'm good, I had to download Zoom again, sorry about that. Listen, it happens, it's like, we're all still struggling with it, you know? No, yeah, exactly. So what's going on? Good, look at you, Connor Limer, big star, fresh off the outstanding single that you just released a couple weeks ago, Things I Never Do. Yeah, man, thanks, what a, for, thanks for checking it out, man. Oh, my God, absolutely. Great. I mean, great, great, great single, Connor. I got to tell you, I mean, obviously produced by uh, Grammy winner producer uh, Matt Rawlings, engineered by the great Howard Hilling. It's, it, it's, just, uh, it's just great stuff, man. Universally acclaimed, Connor. So, uh, and by the way, you know, not just this one, but, uh, you know, keep knocking. My God, what a jewel, Connor. Just great stuff, man. Thanks for listening. I got. I actually have another one uh, coming out at midnight tonight. So I, we hear "Lonely Life," right? Lonely Life, yeah. So that's coming out at midnight, and then in February, the first week, I got another one coming out called "Cheap." Unbelievable. Uh, and they're all from the same sessions. So unbelievable. You, you're yeah. you're going through a prolific phase, and uh, we're so excited. We're the big winners in it. That's for sure, Connor. So well, thanks for checking it out, man. It it feels good to get it out. You know, it's I've been sitting on this record for like. I think over two years now. So really, uh, yeah, it was, I made it back in like 2016 actually. So really uh, 2016. Okay. So you've been like remastering it, waiting for it for the right moment. Yeah. Kind of just waiting for the right time. I just graduated college in May. Right. So nice. I'm kind of hoping this decade, you know, I want to put a ton of music out this, this, in this new era. So it's um, a great start uh, off to a great start. Yeah, and I've been, you know, working on other uh, records too. So I got, I got a lot in the pipeline, you know, coming up. So man, love it, love it, Connor. And like, we definitely want to get up to the music and touch on all that stuff. But uh, yeah. let me first kind of start off with your early life, Connor, because you have such a great and interesting story. Um, I mean, you grew up in a suburb of Kansas City, you know. And early on, your parents, you know, they tell you and they tell you your siblings, you know, when you're about seven, listen, guys, pick an instrument. We want to support you guys in your music endeavors. You know, we support it. And you go ahead and you pick the drums, right? Yeah, yeah. Oh, my. Tell me about that. Why did you go for the drums? Well, you know, it was either piano lessons or drums. So, you know, I had to go. Oh, that was the options. Yeah. Yeah, so it was either piano, which, you know, at the time, it's boring. You know, you're sitting there. So I was like, oh, I want to be a drummer. So, you know, I got a drum set, you know, a cheap little drum kit. And then what was really pivotal, though, was when I met my drum teacher. His name was Luis Orsano. Uh -huh. And uh, he, you know, he was born in Brazil and just hyper rhythmic guy. And uh, so we did lessons for like, I think it was seven years or so. Uh, and then he moved back to Brazil when I was in uh, high school. So gotcha. that was just some formative time, though, when he taught me rhythms. And we actually did, we did like conga lessons. We did drum kit lessons. We did snare drum lessons. So we did all different types nice. of drumming. and uh so he was really it was a pivotal he's an unsung time. hero okay yeah he's amazing and he he actually moved back to brazil and he like works in a studio all the time and he's producing great, records man. and he's he's drumming so he's he was well, a big you know, influence 
post COVID, you, 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 maybe you can go visit him for like a summer, get some tropical, a little tropical album or something, you know? I want to. We're, we're talking about it. We're talking about doing something. I, I really want to. Yeah, it'd be fun to go down That'd there. That'd be great. So. That's cool, Connor. And then how did you make the transition to guitar? When did that happen? Yeah, that was like, you know, in like middle school, like seventh grade. Middle school. I picked it up. You know, my dad had an acoustic in the closet. So uh started yeah. writing songs, you know, and then all the drum, all the rhythms from the drumming kind of went into the guitar playing. And so it's just, I think that's where it all starts is the rhythmic component. Um, Definitely. So, you know, I write a lot from that. That's cool, Connor. But yeah, it seems like, you know, just from the research, you've always like wanted to be a, like music. You, this is your purpose. This is your purpose to give music to the world and give love through your music. Um, so I was curious, like, was there a time like, you know, maybe when you were four or five that you maybe saw a pay-per-view special from someone, maybe a concert that you went to something that just kind of like, like triggered that, 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 that yeah. thing inside of you. Well, you know, the earliest influence was like in sync. You know, I went, this is really funny. I went to their 2001 show as my first concert ever. Peak in sync. Yeah, peak in sync. It was the, uh, what was it called? The Pop Odyssey Tour. I don't know. Oh my God. That. So I yeah, went. That was peak. That it was like, I think it was 2001 or 2002. So I was probably like five or six. Uh, but yeah, I was a big Justin Timberlake fan in those days. Um, nice. Yeah, so that kind of got me into the pop, you know, into the songwriting and then drums and then led to guitar and then all of that led to listening to jazz and listening to different songwriters. And so it all That's just it's a big melting pot of influences, you know. I love it. I love it. Okay, at least you identified the, the best talent early on in yeah. NSYNC. That's cool. <laughs> in <see>, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. That's cool, Connor. It's cool to have that and, pop. Yeah. The pop back. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, 2001 in sync, like it's hard to describe probably to some people how big they were. I oh mean, my gosh, they filled the arenas. I mean, it was sold out shows. Absolutely. With people Everything. screaming, fainting, the whole thing. Yeah. I mean, and Justin <laughs> Timberlake was like the certified pop star. I mean, he still is. But back in those days, I mean, he was like, everybody wanted to be Justin. So that's true. That's true. Absolutely, Connor. Well, that's a cool story. Thanks for sharing that. And then, of course, you know, you, you talk about your middle school and then you go to high school at, at Blue Valley, Blue Valley High School. Uh, and, uh, you know, of course, you were dead set on your career, Connor. And I, I was just curious, what's it like, you know, being in a it, it, it's not like it's like an artistic school. Like, it's not like it was like a musical conservatory. What's it like, you know, just being so like focused, hardworking every day on your craft, knowing what you're going to do and like, you know, not really in tune with like, I don't know, geography class or prom or like some other stuff going on. Oh yeah. Well, I skipped prom. I did. I skipped prom senior year. There but, you go. <laughs> and no, it was, it was great. I mean, I had a pretty normal upbringing, so it wasn't anything too special. You know, it was just Kansas, you know, suburban Kansas growing up, um, you know, but I had a, a lot of really supportive friends, you know, who were coming to shows, you know, I was playing early shows back in Kansas city and yeah. You know, I'd play in Lawrence, Kansas, which is like the college town of Casey. Um, right. So, you know, I had a lot of really good early on experiences with uh, people in my grade and people older than me. And I opened for different bands. And uh, so it was just it was a really good place to grow up in music. But um, I knew I had to go to Nashville. I knew I had to get to somewhere else to really uh, start making records at, at a higher level. So right. I kind of turned my focus from you know, from school and high school to, you know, I got to go to Nashville. I got to make some, you know, find someone who can make my record sound, you know, like as beautiful as it can be. So. And you did good. And you've come a long way from telephone takes, which by the way, <laughs> tell us, tell us about telephone takes. It's like you actually recorded an album on your iPhone four, right? Yeah. That's so funny. You know about that. So that was in 2012 and it was on my iPhone four back in the day. So this was, I mean, this was like early, early demos and stuff. No production, of course. just voice. Of course. Stuff. Yeah. So it was just me messing around. Um, I had a local girl in high school, like draw the artwork up for the cover. <laughs> oh man, that's awesome. That's yeah. awesome, Connor. And, uh, you know, before we get to postcard, I do want to ask you as well about the Grammy music revolution project, because it seems like yeah. it was yeah. such a pivotal little, like, you know, program. I don't know if it's still going on, but it seems like it really like, you know, made a mark on you. Yeah, no, that was really cool. That was in 2013, I believe in the summer. Uh, and they came to Kansas City and they picked people, you know, they picked students. I think it was, you had to be under 18, I think, or something like that. 
Um, you have to be at least decent. Like you couldn't yeah, just like yeah. be a walk on, like sucking and get in there. Yeah. Yeah. They handpicked yeah. I me. Mean, it was an application process and all that stuff. Um, but the, the coolest part to me was like, I grew up in KC and it's like, they picked people from all over the, the state basically. So like cool. even on the, on the Missouri side too, cause it's on this, the border, you know, of right. Missouri. Okay. Missouri. So uh, they just picked a lot of really talented people. And it was my first kind of, uh, you know, intro into collaborating with different musicians. And I mean, I met some really talented bass players, drummers, and we, they actually played on postcard that record that we did. Um, so yeah, it was just my intro into really playing with people and uh, finding a community it. within the, you know, the city. So see, this is what I love about, and about like, you know, and, and this is why this show people like it, Connor, because people, you know, they see you, they, they hear you on satellite radio, on Sirius XM, you look cool on Instagram, but the hard work, you know, oh, the, yeah. the, the, the focus, it, it didn't just come like, like you, you, you have the talent, of course, but like you've, you've put in the hours and, and that's what's cool to find out, you know? Yeah, it's, just, it's one of those things. It's like, if you love music, that's what you do. It's just, you, it's all I think about, you know? So growing up, it's like, it's, it's constantly on my mind. You know, what am I going to do? How am I going to get these people in a room together to record? And I remember on Postcard, like we brought in a horn section. We brought in, you know, different players, different singers. Um, so it was just a really early experience of collaborating with different people. So Love it, Connor. And Postcard, of course, is uh, going to turn six years old this year. Uh, that's crazy that's crazy such, such oh. a great i know that is crazy right it seems like it was wow. yesterday but no wow. so many so many so many questions come out of that record but i think the one that i you know i'd like to start off asking you about the tour because you organized this really cool tour in the fall of 2014 i think it was you went to a bunch of universities um you visited you know 14 college campuses, I think. I think you, uh, so, you know, you, you went to, you know, Belmont University in Tennessee, Nashville, and, you know, Chapel Hill, the whole nine yards. What are some fun memories uh, from, 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 this, from this tour, Connor? Well, that was like the first tour I'd ever done. And I booked it all myself with friends. Um, all my friends were going to college and I took the year off and, you know, did music. That's so cool. For a year. Um, and so, yeah, it was just this really cool experience. It was all small shows, intimate shows, about 30 people or less. Yeah. Um, but the coolest thing was just going to different colleges, seeing my friends in, in different cities, you know, because a lot of my friends went to school on the East Coast. Right. Or they, went, or they even went West, too. I had friends go to USC and stuff. Um, so it was just cool to connect with that group. And then all their, you know, college friends would come and it would just be like a college party and pre-COVID, obviously. But uh so it was just a really early uh, experience of getting to play and travel. And I, you know, I drove like my mom's Buick from yeah. Kansas to Tennessee, to Boston, to New York, to that. DC, over through Chica to Chicago and, and then back down. So it was just, I got to see the whole state or, or the whole country uh, for the first time. Cause I never, you know, I never driven the country before. So that was really Not like that. Right. And, and it really opens your eyes to the, to our country and seeing people and, going to different areas and see, you know, going to DC. I remember seeing all the, you know, the white house and seeing all these monuments that I'd never seen before and going to New York city and being blown yeah. away at how big the city is. And right. So it was just a really, I'm really fortunate to have done that tour. And man, that's uh, awesome. I hope to get back to it, man. I really want to get back out there. So. Oh yeah. I'm sure. I'm sure we will. It's looking like we're turning the corner, knock on wood. So yeah, hopefully, but uh, yeah, you know, and, and looking at the uh, itinerary for that tour, Connor, like, and you say you drove, you were like, how did you do all this? Cause like you, I, I think like, for example, the opening night was um, Belmont yeah. and then the yeah. next night you were playing maybe Kansas or something, but it was like literally the next day. Like, did you have to like pack right after the show? Like, did you get a chance to hang out with friends after maybe have a beer, no beer? Like, how do you, the stamina, you know, the energy aspect? Yeah, well, we booked it up. We had like a few, I think we had like some of the shows, depending on the city, if they were close enough, they were back to back. And then maybe we'd have a day off where we drive. Um, but yeah, every night after the gig, like we just hung out and I got to talk with people and it was just really just friends, you know? So we were all just hanging out and we'd get food and beers and, I'd get to tour the campuses and see like where my friends were living at the time. A lot of yeah. them were in dorm rooms or like, you know, little frat houses or, you know, apartments. So yeah, it was I great. Know. I mean, we got to just see, see those different cities and make it to the next gig. And I had a, 
I was traveling with a videographer who was filming all that stuff. Oh my! So her, oh wow! Where's this footage? Yeah. This is awesome. Yeah, we we did a documentary at the time, uh, and we did a bunch of live, sh uh, you know, shots. So it was cool. It was cool. Cool. Okay, yeah. so maybe for the postcard tenth anniversary double yeah. LP deluxe, it, you know, for, for 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 the Grammy for Grammy award winning Connor Limer, you know, you can get it in a couple of years. That's where the yeah, documentary is going to be. Yeah, the bonus box with all the you know cutouts. Oh yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, exactly, exactly. Oh, yeah. People will pay three hundred bucks for it and they'll be happy too. So cool. Well, the dream <laughs> is to get that record on vinyl. I I want to press it on vinyl, but I still have CD. I'm still trying to sell the CDs, man. You know. Yeah. Uh, so. Where, where can we get the CDs? What's your website, Connor? It's uh, it's just connorlimer.com and it's at my store. So I still got CDs from that tour, and uh, I got there you go. shirts up as well. Get get it, get them before they're gone, and Connor wins. You know, right. starts winning Grammys and the whole thing, nine yards, and like you know, they're gonna be collectibles right. for sure. <laughs> I hope oh so. my we god, a thousand of them. We only printed a thousand at the time. Um. Hold on, I think you froze. Okay, let me ask you. I mean, the, the new songs, Connor, just, oh my God, we love them. I mean, Things I Never Do and uh, Keep Knocking. They're just gorgeous. We love them. We love them, Connor. But I, I, I have to ask you about working with Matt Rawlings. You know, it's, it's. I know it, everyone asks you about it, but, you know, he's so talented. How is the chemistry with him? How is he working with him? Oh my gosh, I, I have no words for Matt. He is just the best. I mean, he's he's like the first guy that, you know, took me on and believed in my, my songs, you know, I met him in, I think it was 2015. And, uh, you know, we, we, we went right to work when we met, you know, I came to him, I had some savings and I was like, let's do a record, you know? And, uh, so we got together, we did a lot of pre-production. Um, you know, we, we spent probably like, I don't know, five months at least, uh, pre-production writing and arranging these songs. Cause he, he brought this whole wealth of knowledge to the to the compositions, you know, he brought in, you know, I'd bring him a song and then he'd, he'd add a bridge to it that just blows your mind. Um, right. Like, like on things I never do, like he wrote that bridge. That, that's Matt, so. I could never lose any little piece of you. You got me doing things I never do music to my ears when everybody stops and cheers and it's true you know i'd never try to be rude but you still have my jacket and my shoes and you won't give them back and don't pretend you never had them on your feet when you're walking down the street over your shoulders you know it's getting colder Maybe we could talk this out Those are things I never do Things I never do And if I didn't say Say the things that made you walk away Baby, you'd be standing here today And I could take it back you never let it in like that, no So take my hand if you think we stand a chance And have my heart if you're looking for romance Maybe we could talk this out Those are things I never do Things I never do Things I never do Again. I think we can pick it up again Cause I could never lose Any little piece of you You got me doing things I never do It's music to my ears And everybody stops and cheers So take my hand if you think we stand a chance have my heart if you're looking for romance Maybe we could talk this out Those are things I never do Things 
Like the bells on that bridge section are really, really like, it's just pop. It's like ear candy. Um, so yeah, working with Matt is just like a dream. I mean, he's, and of course his resume is amazing. He played with Lyle Lovett and Mark right. Knopfler. I mean, the list is so long. So he's, he's just a legend and I'm honored to know him. And I'm, I'm really lucky that we cross paths, you know. And he obviously saw something in you. You know what I mean? He's, he's not just going to work with any schmo. Yeah. I, yeah. I'll say it. Yeah. No, you're modest. I'll say it for you. I'll say it for you. But you know, oh, yeah, well, man, that's awesome. Incredible, that's man. awesome. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. He yeah. Actually, absolutely. So tell us a little bit about the. So, okay. Go ahead. Sorry. No, well, no, no. no. He, go ahead, please. Sorry. <laughs> he uh, he let me. Uh, he's been kind of like a father in a way. He he let me you know sleep at his, you know for a while I was sleeping in his. Uh, he had like this. What do you call it? Oh my God. He's like amazing. Ab above his studio. He had like a little, what do you call it? Like a loft, I guess you'd call it. And I, I actually yeah. lived in his loft for like six months or something in the summer. I'm telling you, man. Needed, That's my, my rent was coming up and he like, let me crash. So, I mean, he's just like, he'll do anything for you. You know, if what a if, guy, yeah. If he believes in you. So he's what just, a he's been a, a, a hero for me. So that's unbelievable. What a great partnership. What a great partnership, Connor. Tell us a little bit about the song that, that, that we're going to play now. Uh, Things I never do, you know, when we edit it, you know, we'll put it in. Tell, tell us a little bit about the song. You know, the reception has been phenomenal. Um, you know, tell us about the creation process for this song, Connor. Yeah. So we, we tracked this with a really talented group of musicians. We had like Tom Bukovac on guitar, Glenn Wharf on the bass, Fred Eltringham on drums. Uh, and then me and Matt were, uh, you know, Matt's on, what is he on? I think he's on an organ on this song. Um, so yeah, we, we tracked it in a day. We tracked at uh, the Sound Emporium in Nashville, Tennessee. Nice. And, uh, and then what was really cool is we sent this over to LA uh, to be mixed by Dana Nielsen, who's, mm. if you've heard of him, he's a tremendously talented mix engineer. He works with Rick Rubin. Okay. Uh, and he is just, he blew us away with this mix. I mean, he like caught the raw energy of the band and the oh, so good. Um, and then of course I went in the booth and did the vocals on it. So, so yeah. It's amazing, Connor. Well, listen, you've been so generous with your time. Uh, but before I let you go, I do want to play a little game with you. It's called flip the tune. And the way it works is I'm going to play three of your songs. We've, we've been playing this with our guests for like a month now, three of your songs, 10 second snippets. But they're going to be reversed. And uh, we just want to know, you know, how well you know your songs if you know them in reverse. Oh, wow. That's, that's the gist of it. And listen, don't be afraid. We've had all sorts of crazy results. We've had 0 for 3s, 3 for 3s, 1 for 3, <laughs> the whole, whole thing. So how does that sound, Connor? You ready? It sounds great. Let's flip do the it. Tune. I right, love let's it. Let's do it. This is, this is uh, Flip the Tune with Connor Limer, up and coming rising pop superstar. All right, let me just. Yeah, so it's when you sing. Yes. Oh my oh, yeah. God, easy for you. Look at that. That's, yeah, that's fun. <laughs> oh no, I feel like this is going to be a joke for you. Okay, let's go with the. Yeah, this is going to be a. All right, let's go with the second one. What you got, Connor? Keep knocking. Keep knocking right there. Keep knocking. <laughs> yeah. That's Man, crazy. you're a beast. To hear that, that's crazy. Oh, my gosh. Oh, you're already passing score. You already did better than 80%, so congratulations. You're already in the top of the curve. It's cool to hear this. This is cool. All right, one more. Let's see if you get the three for three, Connor. Let's just enjoy it for a little bit. What you got? 
Brooklyn, baby, Brooklyn. Oh my god, <laughs> three yeah. for three. Connor Limer flipped the tune. Yeah, I think man. you're like our third perfect score only. Good for you. I'm honored. I'm honored. It's really cool to hear it like that. <laughs> well, you know your stuff, Connor. I mean, listen. What else can we say? You've said it all, Connor. It's been uh, you, we're so we're so honored to have you. You're such a great talent. Uh, we know you're going places, and uh, you know we're really really happy for you. And uh, congratulations on all the success. Yeah, thank you so much, Jamie, for having me. This is awesome, man. Uh, you know, let me know. I'd, I'd love to do it again. This is this is really cool. Absolutely. You're Absolutely. You'll always be a friend of the show, Connor. So thanks so much for connecting. Awesome. All right. Take care. All man. right. Take care. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.